Welcome to ePodasala lecture series in computer science. Last module we discussed about the analysis of iterative algorithms. In this module we are going to discuss about the analysis of recursive algorithms. As you can recollect, I was telling you that recursive algorithm is an algorithm that uses recursive functions. You can also recollect that a recursive function is one that calls itself conditionally. Counting of operations or steps for recursive algorithms is going to be a very very difficult task. Therefore, the analysis of recursive algorithm is going to be slightly different from how the iterative analysis is done. So, in this module we are going to discuss the concepts of recurrence equations. So, this is the first major requirement of analysis of recursive algorithms. Once we have the recurrence equations, then we can apply different methods to solve these equations, but the formulation of the recursive equation is going to be a difficult task. In this module, we are going to discuss some ways of discussing how to formulate recursive functions. Then we will also discuss about the master's theorem to apply to the nonlinear recurrence equations. Fine. Before that, let me give the formal definition of a recurrence equations. A recurrence equation is uh, given for a sequence which is going to be a compact equation that expresses a of n in terms of uh, one or more previous terms of the sequence. In other words, we are going to express a of n in terms of the elements of the sequence itself. The most difficult part is to formulate this recurrence equation. In other words, there is no general way of formulation of these uh, equations. But once these equations are formulated, then we can easily solve these problems. So, let me give you some of the examples of how to formulate these uh, recurrence equations so that you can also attempt this for any other given problem. Fine. I will take a simple example like this. Mr. X deposits 1000 rupees in a bank that gives 5 percent interest as compound interest. If that is the case, then how much money will be there in the account of Mr. X after 20 years? Fine. So, now we have to get a compact equation to express this particular solution that is what we are calling as the recurrence equations. Fine. So, you can see very well the initial condition T of 0 is going to be 1000, then 5 percent is uh, the compound interest. Therefore, we can say T of n is going to be the previous profit plus 5 percent interest. Therefore, you can see very well it comes to 1.05 T of n minus 1. So, you can see this is the initial condition. Therefore, at the end of the year, it is going to be 1.05 T of 0. Then, at the end of second year, you can see very well we can substitute this into this equation. Therefore, this becomes 1.05 T of 1. T of 1 is 1.05 T of 0. So, on substitution of this in this equation, we are getting 1.05 whole square T of 0. So, repeating in this manner, you can see very well for n, it becomes something like 1.05 power n T of 0. In fact, this is going to be the solution of this recurrence equation this. Fine. Why we have to do all the things? The reason is very simple. We want to avoid repetitions. 
For example, if I want to find how much money will be there at the end of 20 years, fine, I can substitute that into this equation. So, that means it becomes 1.05 power 20 multiplied by T of 0, that is the initial condition. So, by substituting this, we can find how much money will be there after 20 years. Similarly, I can do that for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years or any year. So, that means, I, I am avoiding the repetition totally. So, in other words, this is going to be the closed form using which I can avoid repetition. Therefore, I can call this as uh, what you say the solution of the recurrence equations. In other words, uh, we have to formulate the recursive equation and we have to construct a closed form function that is a non recursive function and that non recursive function can be termed as the solution of the given problems. Fine. We will take one more example of uh, formulations. So, in the previous module, we were talking about towers of an eye. You can recollect there are three pegs and uh, in peg A, we have lot, lots of disk and we have to move the disk from one peg to the target peg using the intermediate peg, intermediate pole. So, you can see very well if there are one disk, the number of moves is going to be 1 because straight away I can move the disk from what you say peg A to peg B. And if the number of disk is going to be 2, then the number of moves is going to be 3. And if the number of disk is going to be 3, then we can say the number of moves is going to be 7 number of disk is 4, then it is 15, when it becomes uh, n equal to 5, it becomes 31. So, now the question is like this, if we are given this pattern 1, 3, 7, 5, 31, the question becomes something like, can we find a function where this pattern can be represented? So, we have to make a guess. So, fortunately, one such function available that is 2 power n minus 1. In other words, uh, we can say that this is what the function that expresses this particular sequence of numbers. We can verify this. For example, if we substitute n equal to 5, it becomes 2 power 5 that is going to be 32 minus 1 which is going to be 31. So, in other words, this formula satisfies for all values of n. Let us try to understand how the recurrence equation is formulated for Fibonacci series. The Fibonacci series is given here 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, it goes like that. So, now the question is how to formulate the recurrence equations. For that, we, we have to understand that how this sequence is formed. So, it can be observed that every number is computed as the sum of two preceding numbers. For example, 8 is computed as the sum of 3 and 5. We can say 34 is obtained by the sum of 13 and 21. So, using this particular logic, we can construct the Fibonacci function as Fibonacci of n is equal to Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2 or we can say T of n is going to be equal to T of n minus 1 plus T of n minus 2. This is what going to be the rec recurrence equation for Fibonacci series. Similarly, we can take one more uh, example that is the staircase problem. So, staircase problem is like this where you can walk up steps by going up one at a time or two at a time. If that is the case, fine. If there are three steps, then we can walk up in three ways. We can go one by one as one plus one plus one or we can say walk one step and two that is one plus two 
or I can walk two steps and then one step. In other words, three ways we can walk up this three step staircase. So, by enlarging this, you can have a table like this. For example, for steps one, there is only one way. If there are two steps, there are two ways in which we can do that is uh, step one and another step one or uh, two steps can be walked up in one way. In other words, two ways using which I can walk this. Similarly, for three steps, it is uh, three and uh, for four steps, it becomes five. So, if I keep on enlarging this, then the sequence becomes something like 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. Again, you can observe the similarity between this sequence and the Fibonacci series. For example, you can say 8 is computed by adding the preceding terms 3 and 5 and 21 is obtained by adding the preceding terms 8 and 13. Therefore, you can come to a conclusion that the staircase problem is also having the same recurrence relation and equation as Fibonacci series as t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2. In other words, we can say that the most difficult part in recurrence equation analysis is the formulation of the recurrence equations. Fine. Let us review some of the key terminologies of these recurrence equations before solving this. So, a recurrence equation is called a linear relation if all the factors of t of n have the powers of 1. For example, this t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2 is uh, a linear relation because uh, all the terms are having the power of 1 only. On the other hand, uh, a recurrence equation is termed as the nonlinear relation if the factors have powers more than 1. For example, you can see very well. So, the powers of uh, this is uh, more than 1. Similarly, this is also a nonlinear recurrence equation because uh, you have something like t of n by 2 plus 1. In other words, these things are called uh, the divide and conquer kind of recurrences where we can say that the term is obtained by the nonlinear combination of the previous elements. We can also say that based on the coefficients. For example, if t of n is uh, having all constant coefficient, then it is called constant coefficient recurrence relation. For example, this recurrence relation which we have obtained t of n equal to t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2 is called both homogeneous as well as the linear. Sometimes we may have the non constant coefficients also. For example, you can say that uh, this recurrence relation is having a non constant coefficient. The other concept of order is also very important. So, the order is uh, illustrated by how many previous terms are used for computing the nth term. For example, you take the recurrence equation of t of n is going to be 2t n minus 1, you can see very well only one term is used as part of the recurrence equation. Therefore, we can call this as the first order equations. On the other hand, if you see the Fibonacci series, you can say two terms are used for computing the present term. Therefore, we can say that this is a second order equations. Suppose, if three terms are used as part of the equation then it becomes the third order equations. In other words, the order is very important and based on that the methods are formulated. Fine. What exactly we mean by the solution of the recurrence equations? Fine. The recurrence equation is having lots of recursive terms and uh, we have to find a closed form formula 
and the closed for for form formula that do not have any recursion is what we are calling as the solution. For example, for this recurrence equation I can say that 3 n is going to be the solutions fine we can check it by substituting this back into the equations for n is greater than or equal to 2 if I substitute this into this equation it becomes something like 2 into 3 n minus 1 minus 3 n minus 2 fine if I simplify that you can see very well it comes as 3 n which is nothing but a n itself. Therefore, we can say that a of n is equal to 3 n is a solution of this recurrence equations fine. In short can we generalize this given any recurrence equations can we find the solutions of the given problem fine there are so many methods available. So, in this module we are going to concentrate on three methods only the first method is called guess and verify method then second method is called the substitution method and the third method is called the recurrence tree method guess and verify method this is a method for solving the recurrence equation it consists of two steps one is guess where we are trying to guess what the solution is going to be and in the second stage we are going to verify the solution by the concept of mathematical inductions for example we will take the towers of Hanoi problem the recurrence equation already we have found out it is going to be T n is going to be 2 T n minus 1 plus 1. So, you can see very well I am substituting for different values of 0 fine. So, I am getting T of n as 0 1 3 7 15 31 as we have seen already the solution of this is going to be 2 n minus 1 therefore, we can come to a conclusion that this is what the solution of this particular recurrence equations fine. So, once we guess that then let us try to verify this. So, for this we will be using the concept of mathematical inductions you know very well what the mathematical induction is all about suppose if the hypothesis is true for n then if would able to prove that for n plus 1 also it is true then we can say that the hypothesis is true. So, let us consider this as the hypothesis. So, the base case n is going to be 0 let me substitute 0 here it becomes uh, what you say 2 power 0 is 1 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. Therefore, for condition n equal to 0 the hypothesis is true then inductively I can say that for T of n it is going to be 2 power n minus 1. So, that means this is also going to be true if this is the case then I have to prove that inductively it holds good for T of n plus 1 also fine. So, I can say that T of n plus 1 I am substituting this into this equation therefore, it becomes T of n plus 1 T of n I already know it is going to be 2 power n minus 1 therefore, I am substituting this then after simplifying this fine I am getting 2 power n plus 1 minus 1 that means for the instance n plus 1 this condition holds good also therefore, I can come to a conclusion that what I have guessed as the solution in the very first step is right. So, this kind of uh, method is what we are calling as the guess and verify method. The second method is called the substitution method. So, in substitution method what we are trying to do is we are trying to substitute repeatedly and uh, once we substitute that then we try to simplify the expressions. In other words this method consists of two steps one is called plug and another is called chuck. So, in plug we keep on repeatedly substituting and chuck we are trying to simplify this fine I am taking a small example this is the recurrence equation. So, this is the initial condition. So, I want to plug. So, I get substitute n equal to n minus 1. So, T of n minus 1 is going to be T of n minus 2 plus 3 plus 3. So, this is 
the plugging results I am simplifying this it becomes t of n minus 2 plus 3 plus 3 so this is going to be t of n minus 2 plus 2 into 3 so now I try to find the value of t of n minus 2 so t of n minus 2 again it becomes uh, like this when I simplify that I am getting t of n minus 2 plus 3 into 3 now I have to find the value of t of n minus 2 find t of n minus 2 you can see very well it comes like this so if we keep on repeating this find my expression becomes something like this when it is going to be 1 it is like this when i equal to 2 it becomes like this when it becomes 3 it becomes like this so if i could able to do that find at the end of the ith step i can guess that my recursive equation is going to be like this that means t of i is going to be t of n minus i plus i into 3 fine so if i substitute i equal to n minus 1 into this equations fine after simplification it comes as 3n plus 1 fine this is what the solution of this particular recurrence equations so this method is also highly popular for solving the linear recurrence equations so using this uh, method we can solve problems uh, very well the third method is called the recurrence tree method so recurrence tree method is different from the earlier method where uh, we are trying to visualize everything as a tree structures so once we have the tree then we get all this information level cost and we are trying to find the total cost and the whole complexity is expressed in terms of the total cost fine so i am taking a simple example nonlinear recurrence equation as t of n is going to be a into t of n by b plus f of n so if this is the case then i can visualize uh, that this n is going to be divided into what is a a problems of uh, instance t n by b fine so if i take this recurrence equation as the example fine i am trying to divide this into two problems having the instance size of n by 2 in the next level this n by 2 is going to be divided into two types so n by 2 square n by 2 square so you can see very well this is going to be a binary tree the level is given as the logarithm 2 of n and you can see at every level the cost is going to be n so here it's going to be n by 2 n by 2 it's going to be n so that means you can come to a conclusion that at every level the cost is going to be n so put everything into a equation so first level second level third level so it goes on up to the level of the tree that is going to be log n times so when i simplify that it becomes 1 plus 1 log n times so that means you can see very well n into log 2 n therefore the complexity of this is going to be theta of n log n in other words this is going to be the solution of a what is a the recurrence equation of a merge sort so the recurrence tree has got certain advantage in the sense that it is more visual compared to all other methods so if the nonlinear recurrence is given then we can use the master's theorem also so this is what we are giving as the master's theorem if the recurrence equation is given fine if f of n can be proved this then we can express this recurrence equation as theta and uh, if f of n is going to be this then we can express t of n as theta notations and uh, we can see very well if uh, f of n can be fitted into this then we can express this also as theta of f of n so the key is very simple so we have to compare n power log b a with f of n and based on that we have to fit this into the scenario based on that we can express this suitably fine i am taking a simple example so this is here nonlinear equations. 
so here you can see very well a is going to be 9 b is going to be 3 and f of n is going to be n fine i have to compare this n power log b a so if i substitute everything i am getting as n square suppose if uh, f of n is going to be n can be fitted into this particular formula means uh, fine it can be fitted because for the epsilon value of 1 this is satisfied therefore we can come to a conclusion that this belongs to the type 1 therefore we can substitute this as theta of n power log b a therefore when we put everything the complexity analysis is going to be t of n is going to be theta of n squares fine so master's theorem is fantastic uh, it's a cookbook solution for solving the nonlinear recurrence equations but there are certain limitations for example the master's theorem fails if a is not constant or it is lesser than 1 for example for these sort of recurrence equations the master's theorem cannot be applied master's theorem cannot be applied if you have the negativity involved as part of the equation similarly when the growth is not polynomial so this master's theorem cannot be expressed so these are certain additional problems that you can try in your home so and uh, you can use the master's theorem to simplify these things in summary we can come to a conclusion that analysis of recursive algorithm is slightly complicated than iterative algorithm because it is very difficult to find count so therefore we are taking an alternative route so formulation of recurrence equation is going to be a tedious task so we have to find the pattern then we have to make a suitable guess to formulate this then once you have the recurrence equation then solution is possible by means of guess and verify substitution or the recursive method so using this we can solve this and if it is a non-linear equation then the master's theorem can be applied ready -madely. so with this uh, the analysis of recursive algorithm is over so in the next module we will start concentrating on the design paradigms in the next module we are going to concentrate on the brute force method where we are going to use uh, some sort of logic to solve the problem in a brutal manner and uh, as part of that we are also going to discuss about the analysis where let me try to reinforce these concepts as part of analysis of those problems thank you very much